Hello, YouTubes! Welcome back to James Recommends. This week we'll be talking about either one. I really like either one. I've been getting a kick out of it. I haven't finished it yet, so who knows, the ending may be terrible and I may regret this whole video, but I'm excited enough about it that I want to talk to you guys about it right away. The problem with talking about it, which is something I've encountered a lot in this show, is this is a narrative game, right? This is a game that you play for the story. So how do I talk to you guys about it without spoiling the whole thing? But I'm going to try. So, okay. If you like games like Bioshock or Myst or Gone Home, uh, you should really check out either one. I know that list is a very weird list to all be together, but this game is entirely about narrative coupled with exploration. Uh, what's unique and what's awesome about this game is the fact that, A, totally nonviolent game, right? There's zero shooting, nothing else. It's a first person game in which it's a first person uh, puzzle game. It's a first person adventure game in the theme of Myst. Uh, but much more of the puzzle solving is based on exploration, uh, understanding the world in which you're in and finding pieces that work together. The world in which you're in is what makes this game so interesting though. Uh, this is a game in which you are a experimental psychologist in a fashion uh, and a machine has been invented to dive into people's memories and help people especially people with Alzheimer's uh, recover lost memories right by going in and experiencing their psyche and so most of this game the game begins in the testing center but most of the game happens sort of in the mental projection in the in the psychological landscape of the particular patient you're dealing with and at the same time uh, you're continuously communicating back to the people monitoring the test in the facility the, itself and you get to understand them and their motivations and concerns and their desire to see this uh, new technology uh, implemented on a broad scale and what that might mean and so this creates this a really interesting narrative dynamic where uh, on the one hand you're finding out about all these modern this modern world all these all these people from today at the cutting edge of technology and then you're back in this mishmash of uh, turn of the century all the way to middle of the century English coastal fishing village right and this coastal fishing village represents uh, the the place that this person who you're who you're trying to help recover the memories of it's the place they love right and as you walk through you'll see little bits that as you come to understand them make a lot of sense for why they're here and over the whole thing as you explore new areas you'll get voiceovers usually from the person whose psyche you're exploring but uh, occasionally from other characters telling a little bit about the world or showing just this glimpse this moment right you walk into an empty house and there'll be a letter lying on on the table and you get this voiceover just this little bit about a wedding that was going to happen right and so you're unraveling this mystery of this person and who they are as well as this technology and what it could do simultaneously by traveling through this world and i really liked it i actually found the world a beautiful compelling place to be in I found the narrative to have this mystery that I was intrigued by, right? I had to keep going. And this is, in some ways to me, an achievement for a game that has none of the adrenaline gameplay that we're used to. So that's what's unique and interesting and exciting about this game to me. Uh, what's awful, what's not as good, uh, the puzzles, the puzzles in the game are often a little weak. It didn't bother me, but I could see it being immensely frustrating because these puzzles are based on exploration, right? It's based on finding the right thing and bringing it to the right place and using it in the right area. And this is a fairly large world you're exploring and it'd be easy in the clutter of this world to miss something. And they don't do a very good job at giving you hints or allowing play to progress if you miss something and so uh, 
I could see this game. I luckily so far haven't encountered this, but I could see this this being one of those games where you throw up your hands and quit because you inadvertently missed, you didn't even see the doodad in the shelf over there, right? And you walked by it, and now you have no idea what you're supposed to use in this area. Uh, other than that, also, invisible walls, right? Invisible walls, I totally get it. I've put in plenty in my time as a game designer, but because this game is fundamentally about exploration, those moments where you hit an invisible wall feels that much more frustrating because this the rest of the game feels free and is about freely wandering and exploring and getting to know this person in this area. Uh, so those are my two big complaints. Uh, also, there's a lot of optional material in this game to find out a little bit more about one side or the other. I found it really compelling to do all of those. Doing all of those probably is the to do all of those that's where you're going to run into missing some of these uh, little pieces or doodads that you need to solve some of the puzzles that's where sometimes you have to figure out what the designers were thinking but even with all that right very rarely do i get to see a story that's compelling enough that i just want to spend hours in that world i rarely get to experience a mystery that draws me step after step even though I don't have any of that high action to keep me engaged, right? And so if you like that sort of experience, if you're willing to put up with a slower paced experience for an intriguing story, an intriguing mystery, I highly recommend either one. I will see you all next week.